Uh, I watched the whole speech and the and the interview that Kamala Harris did, um, right? And then I kind of broke down the speech uh, in the dispatch, so so you guys just heard that. Uh, but I, I wanted to kind of address some of the questions as well. And she does this thing. So the first question that she gets asked is whether she's going to visit the U.S.-Mexico border based on the fact that, like, we've had this whole migrant crisis. Oh, my God, people are coming to the United States after the United States said that they're the greatest country on the planet and everybody is welcome and we have a Statue of Liberty that says it will take whoever wants to come in here. Oh, my God, how can these people come in here when we've advertised that everybody should come in here? Like, you know... Uh, so, so they ask her the question, and she immediately, like, gets real defensive. You know, she, de- like, she poses down, and she goes, ah, okay, listen, people just need to, look, okay, yes, okay, li- listen, okay, yes, I'll, I'll fucking go there, okay? That's, is that what you want to fucking hear, you fucking journalist? Like, it was, it was in, she didn't actually say it, but it's, it's the tone, uh, right? The tone of it is just like, are you fucking kidding me, right? You're from CNN. Are you shitting me that you're going to ask me this question from CNN? Right, like she, he didn't ask whether she uh, denounces the CIA coups in Latin America, whether she denounces, uh, you know, wh- wh- whether she denounces the fact that, uh, or, or denounces, you know, uh, 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 U.S. interference in these countries. No, no, no. They didn't ask any. They literally just asked, "Are you going to go visit the U.S.-Mexico border?" And that's a basic move that any politician can do. Right, that's a basic move. It's the it's like the least you could do is to go visit the border and be like, oh boy, boy things are crazy down here. Oh, can you believe it? Can you believe how crazy things are down here? Oh, somebody should do something. Okay, thank you. Photo op. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Like you, that's the least that they could do, right? Uh, but she doesn't. She like she like kind of gets shitty with the report. She's like, well, I'm. I'm yeah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go down there, okay, you piece of shit, of course, so she doesn't, she gives this, like, snarky remark, uh, which is a very Joe Biden thing to do, right, but, and, and she's the Joe Biden's equal, right, so of course she's gonna do some of the things that the original is, is, uh, is gonna do, and then they, like, they keep asking her about Okay, so what are these? Like, she she mentions that she has very specific plans and policies in place. So so like they ask her about these these plans and policies, and she keeps talking about like, well, these things aren't going to be solved overnight. These things aren't going to be solved overnight. These things aren't going to be. Th- and it's like we fucking yeah, no one's asking you to solve fucking the insane clusterfuck that is immigration overnight no one's asking you to do that no one even said that no one was just like look tomorrow uh, let's say is some immigrant awareness day and we would really like it if like we solve the immigration problem by immigrant awareness like no one is fucking asking you to do what we want is to, to to see the fucking dial move forward i have been hearing this like, let's fix immigration rhetoric from the Democrats for three presidencies? Yeah. Yeah, I think the first time I, re- like, where I was like, wow, we might be taking steps towards, like, taking care of this administrative problem at the early points of the Obama administration and it, m- maybe even the late points of the Bush administration. Uh, where there were like this um, group of eight Republicans and Democrats working together to solve this problem, and they were really addressing the, what you know, amnesty and setting a pathway to citizenship for undocumented workers. And everybody was like, "Wow, this is really incredible! Like, holy shit, we never thought this would actually happen in our lifetime." But here we are. We're seeing Democrats. We're seeing Republicans work together. They're trying to fix this problem. Um, no. I mean, Obama addressed, um, you know, start like starting from scratch, get, granting amnesty, and saying, "Okay, everybody's pardoned, and let's figure out a way to get you guys IDs so that you can go through the the process to get your green card, and then figure out whether you want your citizenship or not." And some people might not. Right, but then the overwhelming, and and this is again something that she ignores, is the overwhelming problem is U.S. imperialism. U.S. imperialism creates its own problems. This is a vicious cycle, 
And so in order to ignore the fact that U.S. imperialism created its own problems because they don't want to take accountability, because if they take accountability, that means part of taking accountability is not just saying sorry, but it's actually seeing a change in somebody's behavior. So if the United States takes accountability for all the problems that, that, that U.S. Inter intervention and imperialism have taken in Latin American countries, that would mean that we would have to legalize marijuana in this country. That would mean that we would cut off the cartels at their knees. That would mean that we would have to, um, you know, address what what the CIA is doing and and really put some uh, regulations on them, really restrict them from doing the shit that they've been doing and doing it again. We would have to take uh, immigration as an administrative problem. We would have to stop our wars on a global scale that create refugees. We would have to address climate change and come up with renewable energy sources and ethical renewable energy sources. That doesn't mean that we go down to Bolivia to, to steal their lithium. Again, that would be doing the same thing over again. So, so not taking accountability means that you do get to do a lot of the same shit again. And, and it's totally fine, right? They, they just, they just blame it on these other countries and they go, well, you better buck up buttercup. So she keeps talking about fixing the, pro no one's asking you to fix the problem overnight. You can't fix any of these problems if you're not going to take accountability for what these problems are. And you can't say that we need to look at the root cause of these problems and ignore the history that America has had. But she does, and she and she very blatantly does it in, in when when she's asked the question. What are your specifics? The specifics are shut the fuck up. That's kind of what she probably wanted to say, but she kept repeating like, "No, oh, you can't solve this overnight." No one's asking you to. Let's see the the fucking needle move. Let's see you guys take some accountability for your shit. And that none of that's happening. And the reporter did give her a chance to do that. I remember having a conversation with uh, with my good friend Jay Jackson, host of the fantastic Sacred Now podcast, um, and he's been a guest on this show before. You guys have heard Jay uh, on this podcast, and I remember having a conversation with him. Um, you know, uh, when she was chosen as the vice presidential candidate, and and Jay was saying, you know, I, uh, I think that she right now has an opportunity to look at her record, which was exposed by Tulsi Gabbard during the primaries, which eventually led to her downfall in December of 2019. And he said, you know, she, she has an opportunity to address that um, and then use her actions to prove that she is going to um, fix her past mistakes. And that's accountability, right? That's the accountability. Well, she ain't gonna. She didn't do that. She didn't do any of that. I mean, if you listen to the way that she spoke at this thing, uh, she has no interest in it now. She is literally saying that I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did when I was the top cop of California, um, as the top cop vice president of the United States of America, uh, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be saying, hey, fucking Latin America, better buck up if you if you start electing socialists. If you start doing what Venezuela is doing or what Bolivia did or what Ecuador and, um, you know, all these countries that are that are starting to see a more socialist lean, we're going to come back with our CIA. We're going to come back with our military and we're going to fix some shit we're gonna, so that we benefit. And by saying, well, these problems aren't going to get solved overnight, it, it makes progressives sound ridiculous because we're asking for something that can't be done when we're not asking for that at all. But the, but the mere notion of asking for accountability is, oh, well, you can't fix this problem. You're asking us to fix this problem overnight. No, we want to see you take some legitimate accountability for what you're doing and what's been done. That's not particularly going to happen, obviously. The last question she got asked... Um, was about voter rights and how, you know, there's Republican opposition. Like Joe Manchin is saying, uh, you, you know, it needs to be bipartisan. Both sides need to agree on on the uh, expansion of uh, the Vote, Vote, Voter Rights Act. 
Um, but Joe Manchin, you know, you have Republicans saying that they won't approve it. They're not. And, and Joe Manchin says he won't do it unless there's bipartisan, which just goes to show like, wait a minute, who's in charge here? Is it Joe Manchin? Is it the Senate parliamentarian? That's I'm, I was waiting for that. I was waiting for them to be like, well, what, is, what does the Senate parliamentarian have to say about this Voting Rights Act? And she talked about how it's important to have a strong, you know, um, election in, in, in a democracy. And America is not a democracy. It's provably an oligarchy. A Princeton study proved that. Um, and she, she ta like, does all this flowery language shit, right? Oh, this is why America is so great. Because cause we do it. And it's like, oh, but we do need to do better about in being more inclusive to making sure all voices are heard. Look in America, your your vote is not your belief system. It never it never is. It never has been. Because corporations and private industry has always been in control of our elections. The Democrats have never been a party of the people. The Democrats, from the beginning of their party, have been a party of private industries. Have been a party of corporations. You know, Joe Biden increasing the uh, the tax rate to, what, 20-some percent, right? Because Trump dropped it so far down to get to 28 or something like that. I might be wrong on the number, but uh, it's not very high. It's kind of ludicrous. Um, you know, Elizabeth Warren coming out and saying, we're going to tax billionaires at 1% after their first $50 million. And after they hit a billion, we're going to go to 3% is ludicrous. Not because it's too high or anything or the fact that they're doing it at all, but it's almost nothing. And even though it's almost nothing, you see corporate pushback. And you see Democrats starting to cave. And like, oh, okay, okay, maybe we'll do a half a percent. Maybe we'll do a quarter percent. What if we give you 1% back? This is an oligarchy. If you really want to see um, a change in the way our elections are run, get the money out of politics. You want it to be a true democracy? Get the money out of politics. Overturn Citizens United. Right? Push for that. Be on the side of, of, of activists that are trying to overturn Citizens United. Push for that. Get rid of super PACs, right? Allow third parties to be included in the elections. How are you a democracy, but you only have two choices, and those two choices are virtually far-right choices? They're both right-wing parties. That's all we have. We have a choice of conservatism and neoconservatism. We have a choice of conservatism with platitudes and straight-up conservatism that's fascism. They're horrible choices. That's why in America, your belief systems are not who you vote for. Your vote is not your belief system in America. It just isn't. So, it's, 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 it's kind of a joke to say that America is a democracy and that we're fighting for fair elections when and, and say we need to look at the root cause of a lot of these problems and you just ignore all of this stuff. You would do ignore the root cause of the problems. What an infuriating fucking 40 minutes to watch, right? But this is the first time we've seen Kamala Harris in quite some time. And the second she comes out, she gets in trouble. She gets in trouble. So, again... Keep an eye on this administration. They're going to use the flowery language. They're going to use the academia, and they're and they're going to you know uh, kind of bully everybody into into being like, no, the Democratic Party is the party that for the people and blah blah blah, and, and they're not, and they're not. That uh, I've got my live virtual comedy shows back in action, and the very last Friday of every single month, they happen at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are $10, and every month, it's a brand new show covering a brand new socio-political topic that you won't hear on corporate mainstream networks. 
And as a bonus, uh, some months you might get to hear a weird, quirky story from me related to the topic of discussion, or there might be a special guest joining the show. These are musicians, storytellers, comedians, activists, so on and so forth. Uh, they they will be uh, kicking off the show uh, with a with a set at the at the top, and then it'll lead right into the socio political commentary. Uh, and look, if ten bucks is a is a little bit too expensive, I totally understand. Shoot me a message or an email, and I will make sure that you get a ticket to come check out the show via Zoom. Uh, secondly, if you want to uh, financially contribute to this show and you are on stable financial ground, you can do so at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com slash donate. The biggest way you can help is by becoming a sustaining member, make monthly contributions, uh, which means that you get free tickets to the virtual comedy shows that I just talked about and the live ones when the live ones come back. Uh, you also get early access to a certain Forkful of Noodles videos. You get to ask me questions, which I'll then respond to either in live streams, uh, standalone videos, or as a segment on the virtual comedy shows that I do. And then those will be released as premium exclusive content just for the members. Uh, you get uh, addition, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content. So tons of things for becoming a uh, sustaining member. But if sustaining membership isn't in your cards, you can also make a one-time donation as well. And um, I have now included a statement of transparency, which lets you know exactly what you're contributing to um, and what you're helping me uh, uh, achieve, what goals you're helping me achieve by becoming a sustaining member, by, by, by getting me one step closer to making this my full-time job again. It, 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 be doing comedy full-time and creating content full-time was my full, uh, was my job full uh, pre-pandemic, but uh, because of the the way the world is now, um, I'm unable to do that without uh, without the do without donations from you guys, from the people. And lastly, I want to mention that I do have a online merch store. That's right, I've got uh, t-shirts, I've got mugs, hoodies, you name it, it's there, probably, kind of. Uh, but <laughs> it's available on my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, it's the merch tab, and uh, there, all of the designs have been made by me. There's seven designs uh, on the site right now, but that's due to probably go up. I'll probably make newer designs and release them as, as, as time goes on. Um, but there's a Julian Assange shirt that's available right now, and I'm going to donate 100% of all of the profits made from that shirt to pro-Assange um, groups and journalists and activists. Uh, people like Action for Assange, right? Uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Medhurst, folks like that. Uh, I'm going to make my donations to them. Um, so, so if you want to help, um, you know, people that are covering Assange, uh, hit the spotlight a little bit more, then, then grab that shirt because I'm donating all of that to them. Uh, and last but not least, you can grab all of my stand-up comedy albums directly off of my Bandcamp at krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. My albums are available for a pay what you want uh, price range on Bandcamp, but if you just want to listen to them and you don't want to, you know, have them take up room in your computer, I totally get it. Uh, you can also stream them off of Pandora. It's available on iTunes and uh, uh, Google Play. All of the all of the ways that you listen to music. Uh, with all that said and done, uh, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you guys for being regular listeners to the show. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to all the people that do donate regularly and have become sustaining members because uh, I wouldn't be able to continue doing this without you guys. So you guys really make this uh, possible. And I am very, very, very appreciative of that. 